At its core, a data mesh is a paradigm shift in how organizations manage and access data. Traditionally, we have had centralized data platforms like data lakes or warehouse where data from various sources is consolidated and made available for analysis. While this approach has its merits, it often leads to bottlenecks, governance challenges, and a disconnect between data producers, teams generating data, and data consumers, that is the teams using the data. Data Mesh flips this model. Instead of centralized monolith, data is decentralized and owned by the teams that know it best, the domain teams. In this video, we'll delve into the inner mechanisms of data mesh architecture, exploring its fundamental principles and how it has revolutionized businesses like Netflix by unlocking the full potential of their data. So, let's get started. January 2018, London's usually bustling transport system, Transport for London, or TFL, was in gridlock. Bus schedules weren't syncing with the traffic lights and passenger information wasn't reaching the right people. It was a data mess, quite literally. TFL implemented a decentralized architecture where different teams owned and managed their specific data sets. Through APIs and self-service tools, anyone at TFL could access and combine relevant data. Traffic light controllers could now react to real-time bus locations and commuters received accurate delay information. The result? Smoother traffic flow, happier commuters, and more data-driven approach to managing London's vast transportation network. This is where traditional data pipelines often fall short. Complex infrastructures, slow development cycles, and siloed data all make it difficult to get the insights you need. And that is where data mesh comes in. So what exactly is a data mesh? Imagine your marketing team needing customer data for targeted campaigns, or your sales team needing real-time inventory data to close deals faster. With Data Mesh, these teams can access and utilize the data they need without relying on central data team. Data Mesh isn't just about speed, it's also about data quality and governance. Data Mesh is a new approach, like having multiple filing cabinets organized by departments such as marketing or finance, and each department owns its data, cleans it up, and makes it easily accessible to others who need it. This makes finding and using data faster and more efficient. Initially, data was stored on-premises in large online transaction processing systems or OLTP. These systems were central to operations but limited in scalability and flexibility. As the need for advanced analytics grew, data warehouses emerged utilizing online analytical processing models or OLAP and massively parallel processing systems MPP, to provide faster access to data for reporting and analytics. The introduction of Hadoop marked a significant shift, enabling the use of clusters to process massive data sets in parallel, which was precursor to more sophisticated data management technologies like Amazon Redshift. Now, Redshift allowed organizations to handle large volumes of data more efficiently, paving the way for development of data lakes. These lakes provided a scalable and cost-effective solution for storing vast amounts of unstructured data in the cloud. Data mesh architecture emerged as a response to the limitations of centralized data storage and processing models. Data mesh allows for decentralized approach, treating data as a product managed by cross-functional domain teams. The shift not only enhances data accessibility and quality across different business units, but also fosters a more collaborative and agile data culture within organizations. In a distributed system or microservices architecture, different services own different parts of your application's data. A data mesh aligns perfectly with this paradigm, allowing each service to own and manage its data as product. This decentralization leads to several benefits. Teams have more control and ownership over their data, leading to better data quality and faster innovation. The decentralized nature allows for better scalability as data ownership is distributed across teams. Teams can move faster as they are not dependent on a central team for data management and processing. And no more waiting for a central team to fulfill data requests. Teams can access the data they need directly. Data mesh isn't just a fancy term. It's built on four key principles. Domain-oriented data ownership, data as product, self-service data infrastructure, and federated governance. Instead of central data team handling all data, each business domain, for example, sales, marketing, or finance, owns its data. This means the team that understands the data best is responsible for its quality and governance. Data is treated as a product with clear ownership, lifecycle, and user-centric design. Data product owners ensure 
that the data is reliable, well documented and easily discoverable. The platform provides tools and infrastructure for domains to produce and consume data products autonomously. This includes data storage, processing and governance tools. Governance is decentralized with standards and policies applied consistently across domains to ensure interoperability and compliance without central bottlenecks. Now that we have understood the four key principles, let's lift the hood and see how data mesh translates into actual architecture. Here are the key components. Starting with domains, these are the building blocks of data mesh. Each domain represents a specific business function like marketing, sales, or finance. Domain teams are responsible for managing their data, such as collection, transformation, and serving it to other teams. Think of data products as packaged data sets that a domain team creates and exposes to other domains. These products are well-defined with clear schemas and documentation, making them easy to discover and consume. Data Mesh also provides a platform that allows domain teams to build and manage their data pipelines without relying on central IT. This includes tools for data ingestion, transformation, and serving. Data Mesh APIs act as the communication channels between domains. They enable domains to discover, access, and consume data products offered by other domains. Now, while data domains are decentralized, they still need to work together seamlessly. The interoperability layer ensures consistent data formats, communication protocols, and security across the entire data mesh. And finally, a federated governance approach establishes a high-level guidelines for data security, privacy, and quality. This ensures responsible data management without stifling domain-level innovation. Netflix's data mesh system is divided into two main components, the control pane or the data mesh controller and the data plane or the data mesh pipeline. Here is a breakdown of how each component works and how they interact. Starting with control plane or data mesh controller, it manages user requests, deploys, and orchestrates data processing pipelines. When a user requests to create or update a data pipeline, the controller determines the necessary resources and configurations, then delegates tasks to various microservices to manage these resources. The data plane or data mesh pipeline handles the actual data processing task and once deployed, a pipeline reads data from various sources, applies necessary transformation, and stores the processed data in a destination data store. Now, speaking of the key components of the data mesh, pipelines can be created via user interface or through an API. They read data, apply transformations, and sync the processed data into storage. The controller calculates and sets up the necessary resources and configurations for each pipeline. Connectors are the components that monitor source database and produce change data capture events, which are sent to Kafka topics managed by Data Mesh. It includes connectors for databases like MySQL, Postgres, CockroachDB, and Cassandra. Application owners can also emit events using a library, bypassing the need for DB connector. Developers can register their domain data in a centralized catalog, making it accessible for multiple teams. Each processor is a flink job containing specific data processing logic. Intermediate processors pass data into other processors, while sync processors write data to external systems, for example, Iceberg, Elasticsearch, or Kafka. Now, speaking of transports, Kafka is used as a communication layer between processors. Data flows from one processor to another through Kafka topics. Kafka topics can be reused across different pipelines, enabling data sharing and reuse. Features for tracking data lineage provide users with insights into data usage. Now, all data in the pipelines must conform to predefined schemas using Avro. This ensures data quality, tracks data lineage, and aids in data discovery. If a schema changes at the source, the platform attempts to automatically update the consuming pipelines. Let's elaborate on how Netflix uses data mesh architecture to improve user experience through a practical example focused on user activity data. Given that we have a scenario of improving content recommendations, so basically our objective is to enhance the accuracy of content recommendations for users based on their viewing habits. Let's break it down into step-by-step -step process. We start by data collection. So, when there is user interaction or when a user watches a movie or TV show on Netflix, various interactions are logged. These interactions include what they watch, when they watch it, how much of it they watch, and their ratings or likes. The data source here is this interaction data that is initially stored in multiple databases across different teams responsible for different aspects of user experience. 
for example, playback or user ratings. Then the data pipeline is created. The team responsible for improving recommendations creates a data pipeline to process and analyze this interaction data. They use Netflix Data Mesh platform to set up this pipeline. The Data Mesh controller identifies necessary resources, for example, connectors or processors, and configures the pipeline. The pipeline captures data changes from databases using source connectors. And the CDC events are published to Kafka topics. Intermediate processors in the pipeline perform data transformations like cleaning, filtering, aggregation, and enrichment. Each processor is implemented using a flink job that continuously processes streaming data. The final process data is then sent to different storage systems. Data is enriched, aggregated, and sent to a database for Netflix recommendation engine, Elasticsearch for search indexing, and data warehouse for offline analysis. All data passing through the pipeline must conform to predefined schema using Avro. This ensures that data quality is ensured by processing only valid data. The process data is now ready to be used by the recommendation engine. The recommendation engine uses the enriched data to train machine learning algorithms which predict what content a user is likely to enjoy. Based on real-time user interactions and enriched data, Netflix provides personalized content recommendations to users. So when a user logs into Netflix, they see a curated list of recommendations that reflect their viewing habits and preferences, improving their overall experience on the platform. By leveraging the data mesh architecture, Netflix effectively collects processes and utilizes user interaction data to provide a superior and personalized content recommendation system. This approach not only improves the end user experience, but also showcases the efficiency and scalability of the data mesh paradigm in handling complex large scale data operations. While Netflix is a big name, data mesh isn't just for streaming giants. Several organizations across various industries are exploring its potential. Data mesh can be also valuable for financial institutions to analyze market trends and develop data-driven investment strategies. Health providers can gain insights into patient data and improve treatment outcomes. So, is data mesh the magic bullet for all your data woes? Well, it depends. Data mesh shines in organizations with large distributed data sets and a need for agility. However, if your data needs are simpler or your company is on the smaller side, data mesh might be an overkill. Regardless of whether data mesh is the perfect fit for you today, it represents a significant shift in how we think about data management. It's a move towards a more decentralized self-service approach where data becomes a strategic asset, not a technical hurdle.